Hello, and today we're going to take a look at a mask lots of you have requested uh, to me over and over and over again. It's the Polish MP5 gas mask or respirator. And this is the mask that Poland used to replace all, well, the idea was they were going to replace all of their communist masks with it. Um, obviously, during the 1990s, early 1990s, communism collapsed. Most of the Central and Eastern European countries were then free of Soviet rule. Um, obviously, the Soviet Union became the Russian Federation. And what happened is lots of the countries in Central and Eastern Europe decided they were having to, you know, going to have to update their equipment, find new equipment and things like this. So this is where this comes in for Poland. Now, uh, obviously, some of this is going to get a bit complicated in the video if I start talking about threads in the masks, but hopefully you can follow me with this. Anyway, I'll show you the mask first, and I've got some accessories with it and all that, which I'll sort through. Um, so that's the canteen for it. Hopefully this canteen's good and it will actually work, and I can demonstrate a drinking tube at some point. Oh, it's just falling off the bed. Um, right, here's the mask. It's got some covers on it that I'll take off. But this is the Polish MP5. Now, this is actually a licensed copy of a French mask, and I can't find out the name of the French mask, but... Basically, I guess what happened is once the Cold War ended, Poland put in offers to various countries of different design masks, and the French said, yes, you can pay us so much money to then manufacture our mask yourself. So this is it. It kind of looks quite sci fi fi It's got a panoramic lens in the middle. Um, it's got a voice diaphragm in the middle as well, underneath that. The filter intakes at the bottom. Um, you've got your exhale valve on that side, and then on this side you've got your drinking tube connector. Um, but it uses the French strap system, which I'm not a fan of, so I'll show you something about that in a minute. Okay, it also came with a load of other stuff in the bottom. As well as the drinking tube, which I put somewhere in here, I think I put the drinking tube in this bit. Yeah, that's the drinking tube assembly, so I'll not look at that straight away. Um, I bought this from B Store um, on eBay. Um, I've bought from him actually quite a lot of times, and I didn't even realised I'd bought from him a lot of times. And he very kindly sent me some other stuff with it because he realised it was me buying it who'd done all the YouTube videos. So um, a big thank you to him. I've already sent him a message and thanked him for that. But um, he sent me some Polish NBC suits as well as some spare filters and like the chemical gloves and everything. So I'm not going to cover those in this video, but I will cover them in that video. I'm also going to put a link to his eBay store in the thing because I know you people constantly keep asking me where do I buy the stuff and I just say eBay, eBay, eBay. So in the video description there is going to be a link to his uh, actual eBay page where you can see all this stuff on there, obviously. So if you want to buy it, I'm linking you directly. He also has lots of FP5 filters in stock and FP5 filters have been the ones I've been recommending for ages for people who have GP5s and things because it's the normalised threads which I'm going to get to in just a second. So if you want filters that are, I'll show you what an FP5 filter sort of looks like. We'll open one for the video but you'll get them vacuum wrapped in foil um, which is really nice. I'm assuming as well, yeah I can feel it, that the filters have individual caps on as well. So, if we have a look at the label for this one in particular, made in 2006, uh, I guess 2016 was the estimated expiry date, but again, it's foil sealed, so it's going to last longer than 2016. So, for the, you know, pricey offers, these, these seem quite good, but as had the major advantage of the FP5 filter is you can get to fit on things like the GP5, SHM41, SHMS, you know, all the um, Soviet and also like the Polish and the Czechoslovakian Ghost masks as well. Uh, these are normalised filters. Okay, so what do I mean by normalised filters in regards to the FP5? Right, from my understanding, um, the obviously the issue is that Poland during the Cold War had 40mm Ghost masks for the most part, other than the MP4, you know, the M17 clone. So what they needed is... Um, you know, Goss filters for all their old masks, because they don't want to throw away all their old masks that they've got in storage. They've got absolutely loads of them in storage. The masks still work, but they want modern filters for them. Um, and obviously the issue is that NATO, who they want to become allies with um, for protection and everything else, in Western Europe and America, we all use 40mm NATO, or RD40 filters. So, as I said, Ghost and NATO, as I said before, are slightly different screw pitch on the thread, slightly different thickness, NATO filters are a bit thicker in the screw thread. So, Ghost and NATO filters aren't really compatible with each other. Again, there are some exceptions when you can screw a certain NATO filter into a Ghost mask, and it will make an airtight seal, and I can't explain why. 
because I think sometimes individual filters vary slightly and individual mask intakes can vary slightly. But anyway, Poland had this sort of issue because they've got to buy these new masks and they want to get NATO masks, but they also want to, you know, not have to throw away all their old masks and still have filters for it. And obviously doing a production run of two lots of filters, one in Gost and one in NATO, is expensive. So the idea they came up with was a standardised filter. What's a standardised filter? Or a normalised filter? It's where the pitch and the screw thread on the filter is slightly modified so it will fit both masks well enough to make an airtight seal. So, you know, that's the smarter thing to do. If you can make a filter that works in both your newer masks and your older masks with a different screw thread, then that's great, isn't it? It's like how lots of nations built the 60 to 40 millimeter converters because when they started making 40 millimeter NATO filters or buying 40 millimeter NATO filters, they didn't want to retire all their 60 millimeter masks by that point. Similar sort of logic. So, as far as I'm aware, this is a protective thing on the front of the mask and there's a protective foam thing on the back there. So, let me see if I can peel those off. Right, so that's that one off. Okay, I can actually see out the mask now. And then I guess I have to get this plastic off. Now, as far as I'm aware, this plastic is probably designed to be torn off. Because um, obviously the actual mask plastic is underneath and I really don't want to um, damage the mask. I'm just being very careful with this. But as far as I'm aware, you probably do have to cut this off or pull it off till it snaps off. Right, what I'm going to do is very, very carefully with a knife cut along this and get this off the mask and then we will resume the video. Okay, so this is the mask now you can see through it and because the straps lift up like that I can show you the inside. So there's your drinking tube, there's your voice diaphragm and that will be the exhale valve off to that side and somewhere I guess at the bottom there will be a filter intake but I guess that comes up like a Tissot tube thing at the side so yeah. All fairly competent in there. You've got a nice chin rest in there, actual proper chin rest, because I'm sure you've heard me complain in other videos about masks that don't have chin rests. Now, there's seems like there's two numbers on the bottom. One that says 2010, and the other which I think is 99, but it's a bit faded. So I'm assuming the mask is maybe made in 99, and they expect it to expire in 2010. Or maybe the mask is even made in 2010. Now, I know Poland did get rid of this mask fairly recently. Um, and there's a date stamp there, but I think, yeah, I think the 10 is on the date stamp, so maybe this was built in 2010. So it's a pretty modern mask. But from my understanding, Poland got rid of this um, not too long after adopting it, you know, within 10 to 20 years of adopting it. And half my subscribers have said this is a great mask, the other half have said this is a crap mask so um, I'll have to find out for myself I guess um, now it's maybe it's a bit like the GSR where it looks really good on paper but then when you start getting into the bits a bit more it doesn't look good, so great now the only problem I've got with it so far is this little clip here is broken um, that one's fine but this one's uh, definitely snapped off now I can repair that myself that's not a big issue but obviously when you have a respirator that's probably only Eight years old and you know it's designed to save people's lives maybe if that bit's broken off already not a good sign about you know some of the build quality on the mask maybe again the issue is I think that the French themselves as far as I'm aware haven't actually done much of this mask which makes me think you know the French developed it and they went oui, oui, I don't really like this mask and then they you know bought masks from somebody else or they've not done much with the masks um, Poland's already gone to a mask called the MP6, which looks quite good. It reminds me a bit of the Forshida uh, F2. Um, you know, so it's kind of... They've gone back to, you know, funnily enough, this is a panoramic uh, lens, right, on this mask. Poland's gone back already to having masks with two eyepieces. You know, like how I've always said in videos that I prefer masks with two eyepieces, not panoramic lenses for military use, because they seem tougher and, you know, everything else. But anyway, let's take a look at the mask and put it on. Oh, this is a size 2, by the way. Um, he sent me the sizing guide for it, and size 2, I think, would be the closest to my face. So I've gone for that. So, yeah, mask goes on that. Now, I'm assuming, like most drinking tube masks, you can't really manipulate the drinking tube, so it's always kind of stuck in your face. But, um... Just seeing if there's any way I can tuck the drinking tube out the way, because it's quite irritating. There. 
because I can't see a lever for it. Now let's have a look under the drinking tube cover. Yeah, you can't manipulate the drinking tube through that. Oh wait, no you can. Uh, my mistake. Yes you can. You twist that and the drinking tube goes out the way. Oh, that's handy. Yep, okay, that's actually very well designed, but it's not obvious at all from looking at the mask. Okay, that's much better. Right, so we'll pull the straps over. Right, now let's get these on as best I can. So, you go on here. And... That one goes on. Right, maybe it'll go on. If not, I'll try and do a very quick repair job of the mask by gluing another bit of plastic on. But... Uh, I think that's on well enough there. It's. I think I've looped it over the next bit of the buckle, but... Right. There. Uh, I've popped my ear, so I think it's pressurised. And I haven't actually tightened these straps at all. It seems quite good on the default setting for me. So let's leave it like that for now. Now, it's actually quite comfortable. Um, as I said, I'm not a fan of the French-style strap system where you hook them over. I prefer having six regular straps. But, um, yeah, now, the mask's comfortable, field of view's very good. It has the typical panoramic and a six-style style thing, you know, where you get a bit of distortion there. Weirdly, it's, it's like a softer plastic on here, it's not a, um, you know, hard plastic. So, how strong the visor would be, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to open an FP5 filter, and we'll put an FP5 filter on the mask, and then we'll test the mask, and hopefully... Uh, you watching the video will be able to understand me. Hopefully the voice diaphragm is good enough. I can actually twist the mask's um, drinking tube around with this with the cover on, so hopefully it's in a position where it doesn't interrupt the speech thing. Now, can I manipulate the drinking tube into my mouth with the mask on? Uh, just about, okay. And, uh, yeah, and out of my mouth. And like with most drinking tube systems, it's not perfect, the uh, thing, maybe you need to cut it to size, but you know, it's one of those ones where you're kind of having to almost pull your face away from the drinking tube to get it to go in. Anyway, I'm going to look through the FP5 filters, find the one with the oldest date, because um, I like to keep, you know, the closest to in-date filters I've got sealed, in case of an actual emergency. But anyway, I'll find the oldest of the FP5 filters, we'll open it up, we'll put that on, then we'll give the mask a test. Now, just to show you, I'm not going to open this one, but this particular filter is dated 2012 year of production, and the expiry is 2022, so that's brilliant. I'm definitely keeping this one sealed, because it means I've got a CBRN filter that's got a few years on the date sealed. So that's great. Now, this filter, interestingly, has a different looking packet, so I'm going to open this one, because it's also dated 2015. Um, it's still RD40, uh, where they say X1 forward slash 7. I guess that's where it's saying it actually um, fits DOS masks. But, uh, the interesting thing is this filter's in a different packet. Um, but regardless, this was made in 2005, so maybe it's they've just changed their design over time. But anyway, let's get this one open. I know you can rip the bag open without a knife, but... Okay, so, there you go, mask pole on the bottom of the filter. It's definitely P3, but I'm not sure about the FP thing. But, yeah, maybe it is a CBRN filter, I can't really tell. So anyway, uh, with these you get the bottom bit off first by ripping it. Made a nice popping noise, so you know the filter seal is good. Take the caps off, then let's see if I can do the filter with the mask on. Yeah, the filter's on, okay, so... And mask pressurizers. So let's have a quick look at the filter, see if it looks particularly interesting, but it probably won't. Yeah, there's the charcoal side. Hear a bit of rattle from the charcoal, that'll be the particulate filter there. Okay. Yeah, put that back on. Yeah, 
the other weird thing about the lens on this is it kind of reminds me of when you watch old films and they put Vaseline over the camera to make you know the kind of smeared effect. It's not horrible, you can make out details quite well, but um, you know, it's just a bit weird. Um, anyway, the mask's on. I might need to tighten some of the straps now as a bit more weight from the filter, but we'll see. But let's test the mask anyway. Okay, so the regular test of this, hopefully I can get this to work with a slightly dodgy strap on it at the moment. Um, the filter's in. Now I'm going to have to hope that this is kind of like a ABEC P3 filter, or at least organic vapour for this test or it's just a CBRN filter, because I don't know if this is, you know, a particular filter for, um, you know, a certain type of thing. But regardless, organic vapor is like the easiest kind of vapor to stop, so most filters can do it, even if it's, that's not their intention. Right, get the mask back on. Pull that strap over. And that's the one that goes on properly. Now we'll do this one. Maybe I can do the thing I did before where I actually pull it a bit tighter and get it to go over a bit of the other bit of the mask assembly and tighten. So I managed it earlier and it was staying all right. right. Sorry, I'm just going to have to look in the camera viewfinder to get this on. Now, how did I do it earlier? Right, okay, I've managed to sort of hook that through. So I'll keep it like that for now and hope it works. Right, that's roughly in frame. Right, so far so good, I can't smell anything. Now, this mask is actually surprisingly comfortable. Um, so I said, I've heard a lot of complaints about this. It's a weird mask where half the people say it's awful, half the people say it's great. Um, so far, I haven't really found much wrong with it. Um, as I said, I'm not a fan of panoramic lenses anyway. This one's definitely fine. Uh, the plastic's a bit weird and squidgy, which I think is to help aim with sights. The field of view is quite good, um, yeah the mask seems comfortable, I can't really complain there. The drinking tube system is quite clever where you rotate the, uh, that's the XL valve isn't it that one, uh, so that just spins and does nothing. Yeah the drinking tube one's quite clever where you can actually twist the drinking tube around in a circle by twisting the connector, so that's good. Uh, straps are comfortable enough, six point head harness but with bottom straps that clip on like that, which I said I'm not a fan of. but. It is what it is, and it's a copy of a French mask, or based on French mask. So anyway, I guess mask pole is basically like Poland's version of Avon, or like MSA or whatever else, you know, it's like their domestic big company that makes masks. So I don't know if the MP6 is actually their own domestic design, or if it's another licensed copy or whatever, but... As I said, this thing certainly isn't bad. Some people have said to me, you know, this mask's awful, it's awful, it's awful. Uh, so far I can't really find too many faults with it, especially compared to some of the masks I've looked at. I mean, let's be honest, it's better than the GSR Britain has now. It takes a proper filter, it's not as heavy as the GSR. It's more comfortable. Um, this mask does have the issue a bit where it might be me needing to alter the straps, but it does dig into my chin a bit when I'm talking. It's fine if you're not really talking with a mask on. I mean, this isn't exclusive to this mask either. It's where, you know, some masks just uh, wear your jaw out a bit with the weight of the straps, you know, tightened. But... Alright, let's twist my head around various ways and see if I can still get a good seal. Yeah, um, I can't smell any of the fragrance by doing that, so I guess it's working in that regard. Now, annoyingly, my camera battery is already telling me it's low despite me charging the camera recently. I guess because this camera is going to need replacing soon and all my batteries in my spare seem to all drain super fast. But I assume I've had this on for more than a couple of minutes and it's working well, so let's just, uh, you know, disconnect the things here. 
it immediately, hmm, I can smell the vapour. So, let's keep the mask on my face by doing this. Um, the mask definitely works. Um, so, what we're going to do now is just sum up the video before my camera battery dies. Okay, so what do I actually think of the MP5? Well, from my first test of it, it's actually pretty good, you know. Um, that's the weird thing, is that lots of people had told me, you know, as I said, it's a bit of a Marmite mask, in terms of people were saying, this is, you know, really great, Poland's got such a great mask of the MP5, and other people going like, no, this is awful, this is an awful mask. Other than the chipped bit of plastic there, um, I can't really find many faults with it, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't know how strong that would be against blister agents, but, you know, that's not something I'm going to be exactly testing in my house. Um... Yeah, it's all good. When I first put the filter on, uh, this bit did fall out, uh, so I've pushed it back in, but that's nowhere near an exclusive problem to this one mask. Uh, I've had that happen with loads of my masks, where the actual kind of rubber washer that they put in the filter intake can fall out. But saying that, there's actually another rubber one in there, so maybe this thing was from the filter cap itself, I don't know, the mask filters definitely still worked with this washer in there I think yeah, and this might have actually been a washer from that cap here, but um, yeah, because yeah, there's definitely a rubber washer in there anyway, so maybe that wasn't even a washer falling out, I can't really be sure but um, yeah it's comfortable for what it was, it wasn't steaming up, as I said the problem is that, you know maybe you can see from that, uh, the you know, things actually quite blurry in a sense, but as I said, panoramic lenses have never been good. Uh, this hasn't gone bright orange like uh, my MSA one did, because let's make the thing out of silicon. Oh, joy. Um, oh yeah, you can pop that off if you want to see the XL valve there. So, pop that back on. Yeah, it just snaps on. Easy peasy. Um, but yeah, it all seems fairly good to me. So yep, like I said, if you want to get one, Beastall's um, eBay page is going to be linked below. Uh, a big thank you to him for sending me all those extra filters and stuff, and the NBC suits. Um, I'm probably going to look at the NBC suits in my next sort of 5pm video, um, and we'll see how well they work. Well, I can't really test the NBC suits in a sense, but how comfortable are they, how lightweight are they. I think he said they are called the L1 and L2 suits, but I'll double check that when I do the video and make sure I try and find out which one is which suit, because they both... You know, one's like a slightly green colour, one's a grey colour. Anyway, my camera battery is probably going to die on me any moment now because it's warning me with the tiny little indicator bar. But yeah, the Polish MP5, I actually quite like it, to be honest. Um, yeah. It's quite an interesting mask. As I said, Poland made the right decision by making a normalised filter that could go on various masks. I had the older mask pole filters that you've seen me use in loads of videos that I use to test all my Goss masks because, you know, they, they work and they're good. But yeah, very, very good. Um, you know, really nice. Definitely would recommend this mask if you're looking for one. And as I said, if you want to get one, the link will be in the description. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, good mask.